Hi and welcome. So today we're going to look at something I, I've i been asked to do. It's called defensive security. Or you can just say, how would you work with security in your organization? So I have a lot of offensive security on my channel, which is, I would say, the most popular part of my channel is offensive hacking, you know, pen testing, stuff like that. But Probably, as we all know, most security task is actually before pen test. It is planning security, implementing controls, and so on. So I I would like to give my take on, and it's gonna be a somewhat short video. You know, I I know how long, five, ten, twenty minutes. No idea. I'm just literally recording it right now. So let's uh, look at this. Um, first of all, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a an idea about we have the NIST standard and we have the ISO standards. Now, the NIST standards is uh, just for USA. Okay, so if you're not working in your USA or for USA or with any American, you know, companies, then there is no reason for you to use NIST. Okay, you cannot be certified in NIST. Okay, you can be certified in ISO standards. So the ISO standards is international and works all over the world, right? So it should be pretty straightforward. But then again, if you look at the text below, it says NIST is actually over ISO. What this means is basically that if you're following the NIST standard, you are already following the ISO 27001 standards. So it basically means that, you know, the ISO standard doesn't really contain the same things the NIST. So NIST is more broad. So basically you can ask yourself, why 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 can you not use NIST as a standard? Well, I I guess they just haven't gone that far. I I, I just relay the message. So basically when you're using NIST, you are already well, in ISO 20001, and you are fulfilling all its needs. However, what you're being certified in in uh, ISO 20, 27001 is just if you uh, fulfilled what ISO 27001 told you to do, but it doesn't really concern what other things you did. So if you're using other ISO standards to fulfill the 20,001, well then it doesn't really matter because eh, it's not it's not what you get certified in, you get certified in the ones, at least the ones for now. So, so when you are choosing which standards to follow, well, I, it's a difficult choice, you know, I, I, I cannot say you're gonna use NIST or ISO, I know if it was me where I am from in the world, I'm probably gonna follow the ISO standard because it's easier for me to get recognition for it. But that could be very different from where you're from. You might be located in the States, USA, right? Then you would probably need to follow the NIST standard. If I am in my country, Denmark, going to do business with someone in the USA, I might need to do some NIST stuff for the customers, the American company. If they want to trade with me, I need to prove that, well, they have the same sort of way to work with our, you know, assets. And then I would need to follow the NIST standard or at least to document that we did the same. All right, so I think this kind of covers this slide here. Now, there is a way for you to get like a, an overview. I just found a link, basically, you can click it. And if you scroll down a bit on, on that link here, you're gonna see that, um, you will see down here that it's an overview of the ISO standard series. And the very first one is basically the, 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 um, the overview of, you know, the ISMS system. Information security management management system. So it's going to describe, you know, basically an overview and a vocabulary. You know, that's about it. So what you get certified in is in the um, 20, 27001, 
which is, you know, it's not that old anymore. I think you can download a much newer version, I think 17 or even 2020, I don't know. 2021, I think it is. But that is for the um, um, the actual, you know, how to implement this ISMS. Then you can go forth and say you're going to use the 27002 one, which is um, Code of Practice for Information Security Controls. And, and that is when you're going to choose your controls for um, the, 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 the risks that you have in your company. So when you're going to do your risk assessment and all that stuff, we're going to get back to that in later in the slide. Then basically you're going to implement some of the controls and then you use the 27,002 I stand out to do that. But there is a newer version. A newer version is 2022, I think it is. So this is just an old one mentioned and the newer version is slightly changed. They categorized it into four categories. You know, I'm not going to go in depth with that because it's going to be a lot of very long video. I do have the dash standard in paper, but it is for me only. I'm not really allowed to share it. I'm going to try and find a way that the, where I can do it in the video. And yeah, but I, I don't know if that's possible because it's going to cost me a lot of money. And since I'm not really earning any money on this YouTube channel, well, basically I cannot afford to go and buy that standard as a uh, copy, um, non-copy, you know, shareable document. I don't think that is even possible to do. However, you know, I'm, I'm going to try if you can find a solution, but I hardly think that's possible. Then <clears throat> you're going to need to do some, uh, uh, if you need some guidance to implement this, then you can look in the uh, 27003, and the fourth is all about monitoring, measurement, and an analysis and evaluation. And then you can basically just read what is this all about. And as you can see, there is a lot of them in the family of 27,000. And... Depending on on what you're basically gonna do, storage security that we have it, you know it's a very long standard. You know um, this is what I would definitely suggest you to do. Well, if you need to do this implementation of the ISO twenty seven thousand one, you know in no way can I explain the ISO twenty seven thousand series for you in this quick small video but I can probably give you an overview and compare it with the NIST standards and say well what is it and what is it not how literally should you attack this if you're going to work with the ISO 27000 standards all right so going back to the slideshow we're gonna change the slide just a tad and basically talk about if you're going to implement the NIST standard cybersecurity uh, framework it consists of five phases or five areas to work with. Basically, it is identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover in that order. Now you can basically see that identify is is more about you know asset identification, governance risk assessment and risk management strategy, all kind of things you do. So it's a lot more organizational stuff you do there before you do any technical stuff. The protection is a lot more technical because this is where you have awareness training, of course, data security, access control management, information protection processes and, and procedures and protective technology. And that could be stuff like the IPS, the new intrusion prevention, intrusion detection systems, many different things to 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 verify how how you're going to protect your your assets and this is very important that you identify all your assets and what is your business plan and your conti continuity in that in order to do it the right protection the detection part is is why you're gonna you know find anomalies vents, security continuous monitoring and detection processes so you could say that protective technology is probably more like a firewall where the detection processes, and I kind of said it, but I'm going to say it again, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, because it the IDS and the IPS can basically be one piece of software that, that both detect and block. And, and protective is more like a blocking mechanism, and detection is more like a detection, right, <laughs> mechanism. So, uh, yeah, where would you put that? It doesn't really matter where you put it, right? What matters is that you 
get it implemented in your plan. So this is very important. The response part is the response planning, communications, analysis, mitigation, improvement. So what, whenever you detect something and something happens, you know, at some point, attack will happen and you cannot stop the attack. Then, of course, you need to have really good responsive planning and communication, way to ana- analyze the attack. You have any sort of mitigations, you know, how, if it's ransomware, can you just roll up your backup and then boom, you know, no harm done. That is responding. Recovering can also be backup. And this is where I am, I could just have to say that, you know, respond and recover go hand in hand because if you cannot respond properly enough, probably not going to be able to recover uh, properly enough. But you're going to find out if you're ever going to be hit, how important it is to actually talk about these things in a team with your boss with your technical officers with your you know planning whatever they're called officers uh whatever you know employee that that handle this and that job everyone is important recall replanning improvement in communication so now we're going to recover from the from the, the 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 compromised you know you've been hacked so 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 how we do that you know how 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 can you learn from it and this is where the recover part goes in and say you can learn from it in this this way all right so i hope you got like an overview of how to use the nist identify protect detect respond recover it is a communicative you know phase where you're going to communicate with other people to find solutions and you can do that by using this which is from the iso standard called um uh, plan do check act cycle <clears throat> so you plan identify your problems, you do test potential solutions, you check, study results, and you act, implement the best solution. And this is an iterative solution that, that continuously uh, go round and round and will never stop. So I just want to say that, that many, many bosses think that security is something you just do one time as a package, like you have a flat tie and you put a new one, and no, it it is not. I am really sorry boss watching my channel i hardly think you will but let's assume you do it is not something you can just fix say it on your company and say oh then we just put that check mark there and now we're done it is something that require continuously feeding uh resources to some so a part of people that 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 you know, work with the security, implement security. They plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act, and then continue, continue, continue. This is the way you're gonna work with security. You're probably gonna ask me, isn't there a way to do baseline security? Yeah, there is, but um, baseline security is kind of what it suggests. It's just a baseline. It doesn't really give you any sense of quality to your company because if you're doing baseline quality it's more like is there a lock in the door the answer is yes or no not about how do we how do we ensure that the lock is locked when it should be locked how do we ensure that the lock is 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 good enough to 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 you know uh not be able to lock pick how how would we make sure the lock is strong enough not you know, so you cannot kick in the door. You know, that is not the part of the baseline security implementation. So I'm not really, I'm not, I'm saying, yeah, you can do that, but a baseline is a baseline, right? It's just more like a questionnaire. And a questionnaire is never enough. So please don't do that. It's time to change the slideshow. So if you want to achieve, you know, a compliance, if you, if you want to be compliant to the ICU, 27,001, there is a way for you to do that by following this cycle here where I implemented the plan to check out, you know, and you can just go ahead and visit Business Tech Weekly where I took this picture from because uh, I'm not the best one with graphics and I don't think anyone would find it a bad idea to share security. So basically this is the way you can do it. You know, I, I would... I, I kind of said this already, but now I just put it up. And of course, this is an iterative phase. The plan to check act is 
something that can be used individually on each of the blue faces or just all of the blue faces. Depending on how you work with it, how large of a team is it, how many things are going to secure, how many assets do you have, how large is your company, how big is the team, so on. What is your context? Is your company located on Hawaii or are you on the North Pole? You know, it's a total different context. So please have that in mind. If you want to get ISO 27000, you know, verified and get a certificate, there is a step-by-step -step plan you can follow here. You know, it's it's kind of easy to just look at it and say, yeah, I can do that. But it's not that easy. Um, I, I don't know why they it said step 7. It should say, say step 6. I don't know. Uh, step 6, I, I, I just don't really know. Um, but I think um, this is probably a really good way to to attack it. You know, what is most important is that you do a really good risk analysis method. And, and there are many different ones you can choose from. If you read about the ISO standard, you know, you can choose from something called baseline or combined or... You know, you can do formal, informal, different ways. You can do the full, the full boundary. You know, <laughs> and 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 I would say the the best one to do is 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 a, is one described as a combined risk analysis method, which is gonna, which is gonna involve people from the inside, from the outside, to 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 give you their perspective of your company, your your risk, your assets, your controls your things, whatever you have, and this is going to bring the, the most value for your company. So this is the end slide for this, and, and basically I'm just going to say that um, it is very important you do think about, you know, how to implement uh, security, because defensive security is not easy to explain. I'm going to do another video on defensive security, uh, but it's going to be a bit more technical than one. I'm going to go more in depth on um, which security controls you can implement on a, a computer network and how to um, how to manage that. But I'm not going to show it as a as a real life implementation because that's going to be a lot of configuration to look at. And and I must be honest, it doesn't really fit. A YouTube video that well it's gonna be more like one YouTube video how to install a firewall boom but that's not gonna be what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like a more overview um, of how to implement different kind of things on a whole network how to secure it which kind of security mind mindset you're gonna have and feel free of course to to verify with others and give me some comments if, if i missed something because we're just humans we miss stuff we forget stuff we yeah that is the way to be human so <laughs> so basically uh if you're alien <laughs> and you're really good you know just uh, tell me if i did something wrong um until next time hope to see you again have a really nice one see you